Hello, so welcome. What we're going to do is apply the crank Nicholson that we derived in the last video to a coding environment. So what we're going to do is um, I want to do it in a new environment because I don't want it to. And then what I'll do, I solved it earlier. And so I'll put hopefully the correct graph up with or alongside the one that I derived or completed earlier so that way we can make sure everything works properly. So what we're going to do is we're going to import numpy as np so we can do calculations. And then we need to be able to graph things. So we're going to say from plotly.subplots import make subplots and then from scipy.linear algebra what we're going to do is we're going to import solve banded and that's what we're going to use to complete our matrix that we have set up or we were going to set up but so what we're going to do is when we get to it after we define the things that we're going to our constants and our variables we're going to have three diagonals we're gonna have an upper diagonal we'll just pick this one a main diagonal and then a lower diagonal that all have values and then we're going to index that in with our b matrix that we're going to bring in and so first what we're going to say is we need a thermal diffusivity alpha equal to one and then we have our number of time increments is equal to let's do 100 because open oh, my number locks on 100 and then we're going to have, let's say we want the environment to take 2,000 time increments. And then when we're going to pick the size of our increments that we take in our bar. And so if we say, okay, let's take our X size increments in our, in our bar, we could say DN, I guess. It doesn't really matter. We'll stick with DX. We want that to be equal to 0 0.5. So that gives us 50 increments. And then we want to take, let's do what we'd say previously that the only working value for DT was 0 0.5. So I guess we'll stick with that. And then what we're going to do is what we did previously. We're going to set up our X variables for our graph. And we're going to say that our numpy A range is equal to the number of increments we have times our delta X or our delta X. So then if I say, okay, show me X, we get 50 values all at or I'm sorry, we get 100 values all at the half step. And now we have from 0 to 49.5 or 50. <laughs> so what we're going to do is bring in our new R value to the environment. So previously we had that R was equal to alpha times our delta X or our, or sorry, our time increment divided by delta X squared. But then in the, with the crank nicholson method, we found that you can divide it by 2 again. So we'll say that R is equal to our alpha times our time increment size divided by delta x squared divided by 2. And then what we're going to do is what we did initially again, and that is to define our, or to set up our temperature across the entire bar. And so we're going to say that our temperature is equal to full from which is the number of increments that we have. And we're going to set it all to 20 degrees Celsius. And then we can say, okay, we want our first node and our last node to be 50 and 80 degrees Celsius respectively. So we can say that our T zero node is equal to 50. Nope, not bit length. And then our T, we could say, okay, let's do T 49.5 for our last node, or we can just reverse index it or back index it. And we can say, okay, let's set our last node equal to 80 degrees Celsius. And so if I say, okay, show me T, we get 50 for the first, 80 for the last, and then 20 all for every other measured increment across the bar. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to set up again our first matrix, which has those three major diagonals in it, upper, main, and lower. And so we're going to say, okay, let's do matrix A. That's going to be equal to zeros and we want to set up that we have three diagonals and it is the number of increments that we have minus two. So if I say, okay, show me A, then we get 
zero across the board and we have three diagonals for all of the times that we are looking at. So if I, if I say, okay, next we're gonna, please don't delete that when I press enter, awesome. We're gonna say, okay, let's set our first diagonal from zero or our upper diagonal from our first node all the way to the end. We want that to be equal to our negative R value. And so if I say, let's shift enter that and I say, okay, show me A now. Now we get negative one for our R value all the way across. And so then if I say, okay, give me our main diagonal, which is gonna be our first, we want the value from our first all the way to our last node to be equal to one plus two times R. And if I say, okay, show me A now, now we get a different value for this, for our upper or our main diagonal. So if I say, okay, now we, let's get our lower diagonal. We want that to be from, oops, the beginning all the way to our last index diagonal. We want that to be equal to negative R as well. And so if I say, okay, now show me A. We have negative one for our upper, negative one for our lower, and then three for our main diagonal. And so let's get rid of this. Actually, we can keep that in here. This doesn't really matter. And so the next step is to set up our matrix that we're going to multiply that by to get our graph. And so we can call that, let's call that matrix B. And we'll say, okay, our B matrix is equal to the zeros. And we'll set it up again, how we did previously. Of the number of increments that we have, minus two. So if I say, okay, now show me B. We get this size because we say we only need three set arrays because again with a we said that we had three with this one we only have the number of increments we have minus two so it's just going to be one whereas this one we have three arrays we're going to close both of those and so now i'm going to say okay let's d give what our b matrix is equal to and that's going to be equal to our r value times the temperature in the bar from the second node all the way to the end plus one minus two times our R value plus, nope, sorry, times our R value times the temperature from the first node all the way to our back index node. And then we're gonna say plus our R value times the temperature from the very beginning to our second, the one before our back index node, or I guess, to the second to last. There we go, that's the node. Okay, and then we're gonna say, if we want, to, we're gonna bring in our first node that we reference, we're gonna say our B zero node is equal to B zero plus our R value times the temperature at that zero node, so it'd be times 50. And then we're gonna say that, we're gonna do the same thing with the other node, which we set to 80. So we're gonna say our B node at our back index node or the temperature is equal to back index node plus R times our temperature value at zero. So if I say, okay, show me B now, we get our R value times our first value and it's 20 all the way across the bar and then our 80 node times the R value plus the temperature, and we get 130. So if we remove that, so now we're close to being able to plot it and determine, and then we'll show that, again, with the Crank-Nicholson, there are no limitations on delta X and delta T. But first, we need to set up our plot. So we're going to say, let's do figure. I guess we only have one here, so it doesn't matter. It's equal to make subplots. I hope you can see me. I hope it's not too dark. Rows equals one, columns equals one. Okay, cool. So we're going to say that our figure, we need to add a scatter plot. And we need to set it again, we set up our x variables or our x axis variables, dependent variables earlier. We're going to say our y is equal to our temperature again. Nope equal to our temperature again, and we're just going to name it crank. Okay. That says fog. 
Awesome. So we have our first node at 50 degrees and then our last node at 80 degrees. And so the next step, if I remove that, is to bring in our solve banded function. We're going to say 4i in range the number of increments that we have, time increments, plus one. Maybe if I get rid of the space here, we actually will be able to work because that would have been an issue right off that. I didn't give it any conditions. So we need to say that our temperature from our first node all the way to our back index node is equal to our solve banded function from one to one. A, B. And then we need to say that our B matrix, again, is equal to all of this, because we need that to be within our range. OK. And then we need to say, again, that our B at our first node is equal to first node plus R times the temperature at the first node. Okay, we'll go away because you're freaking me out. There we go. And then our temperature at the last back index node is equal to the temperature at the last node plus R times our temperature at that back index node. Excuse me. And then we're going to do what we did previously where we tell collaboratory that we only want graft what we only want graft is whole values of our at whole values of our time increments so we're going to say that again if i modulo 100 actually i have to make sure that this works before i even bother with that awesome so if i modulo 100 equals equals zero then we can say okay time give us our graph Again, with our x equals to x, y axis is equal to our temperatures. And then our name, let's do this, so long as this agrees with me. Wonderful. And so now if I say, OK, give me the fi fifth figure. What we have is our crank nicholson equation all the way up. We have all of our temperatures at the given time increments that are taken. And so if I said, okay, give me, we had, this was the highest number, so let's just start at 0 0.6. I have to shift enter all the way down. I forgot. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. What if I go to zero point four? Whoa. Something is a mock. Oh, this could be why. Awesome. So let's go back to 0 0.5 and see if that. I had it multiplying by the R value way too many times there. So let's see if we get, oh, significantly better. Wonderful. And so again, we know that at 0 0.5, it should work. And if we went anywhere over that, aside from like 0 0.5000001, it wouldn't make much of a difference. But we know that at 0.5, we should have a picture that looks pretty like that. And as soon as we go over, we can keep continuing up so long as our R value remains less than one. And again, 
increasing delta t and delta x to anything greater than one is obviously not going to, or is going to do that. But if we get, let's do 0 0.7. Good, let's do 0 0.8. So uh, with these graphs, as we continue to increase the value of our delta t, because again, that's what was giving us problems earlier, closer and closer to one, instead of getting wiggles, we're getting solid or correct flowing graph images through our graph. And so I ran this earlier, like I said, and got the same thing. And I'm sure if I ran to 0 0.8, we would probably get the same thing, which we did. And so again, with this, what we just did and proved is that with the Crank Nicholson method, there are no constraints on the delta x and delta t values that you choose to use while iterating through the process and ultimately coming up with a result.